Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for choosing Across the Fence. I'm Will Michael. Today we're live at the Proctor Maple Research Center in Underhill. As you saw on the Channel 3 News at the top of the hour, the center is serving as the backdrop for the governor's ceremonial maple tree tapping. Now that event is an it's an annual event. It serves as the unofficial start of the maple sugaring season. And the Proctor Center was chosen this year because it's its 75th anniversary, serving as the nation's premier maple research center. The center specializes in the study of sugar maples, particularly with respect to sap flow and the production of maple syrup. There's no doubt the center has had and continues to have an important impact on Vermont's multi-million dollar industry. Proctor Center sits on a conventional northern hardwoods forest. You have sugar maple, of course, and then you have beech and yellow birch. We're 13 to 1500 feet or so in elevation starting to see a little bit of spruce and fir creep in as we go higher in elevation. The thing that oftentimes producers think is that we're in an area that's a super great area for maple, and it isn't. There's nothing in terms of the forest or the land that's particularly special. It's just, it's special because of the research that's done and the people who are here, but it, it represents a pretty typical forest in Vermont. Maple research at UVM has been ongoing since the 1800s. There has been a long history of both basic and applied research on maple tree physiology, maple syrup production that has been going on at UVM and since the birth of the Proctor Center 75 years ago. Really one of the founding principles of this property was the fact that there needed to be a space large enough to do the type of research that's important for producers. This was an old hill farm. The Harvey farm existed before UVM was given this land. It was probably a tough place to grow crops, but having a dedicated property that could be used for ongoing research was really critical, and that was one of the big motivations that uh, Jim Marvin and Fred Taylor had for, for establishing this, this property. My name is David Marvin, and I'm the founder of Butternut Mountain Farm. My father, James Marvin, was the founder of the Proctor Maple Research Center with uh, Dr. Taylor. The center itself uh, was called the Proctor Maple Research Farm at that time. There was a sugar house and a small building that resembles a fishing shanty somewhat where the recording instruments were kept. And I remember many springs going up, riding on the dray as the buckets were gathered behind the sugar house. Dad said that what he really wanted to do is to have a place that um, expressed the reality of sugaring with their experiments so that people would believe in the work that they were doing because they actually were sugaring themselves. The work that I do today is based on and builds upon the work of everyone that has come here before me. So one person I think of in particular, of course, is Dr. Maria Franca Morselli. She was really the first to look at what are the potential impacts of concentrating sap with reverse osmosis on the quality and the composition and the flavor of the syrup produced. She was doing that work in the 70s and early 80s, and here I am in the 2000s <laughs> doing very similar work at a different scale, uh, but building upon the work that she and her colleagues began. I'm Sam Cutting the Fourth, and we're here at Dakin Farm. It's my family business. My dad pretty much started it. He, he bought a little roadside stand called Dakin Farm Maple Market. I did take one class with Dr. Marcelli, and I heard some of this from my father too, and I know how much he respected her. Here's this Italian woman that has this pretty strong accent, who's a scientist, in there with all these sugar makers that have all their perceptions of how things should be done. They saw that she was a real person and that she really cared about the industry and what she could contribute to it to make it a better industry, more successful, um, more efficient, and a better quality product. Now, an economic impact study done by the University of Vermont nearly a decade ago shows that maple contributes an estimated $325 to $330 million a year to the Vermont economy. And that was before the pandemic, before enormous growth in the maple industry of the last five to 10 years. 
Joining me now is a man who knows all about the economic importance of maple to the state of Vermont. I'm joined by the Vermont uh, Secretary of Age, uh, Agriculture, Food and Markets, Anson Tebbets. Thank you very much for being with us. Well, it's great to be with Across the Fence. And thank you to the agency, thank you to the university, and thank you to Proctor for and the Maple Sugar Makers Association for hosting this event today. How has the industry grown over the last 10 years, Anson? Well, we've seen a, a tremendous growth of a lot more taps uh, going into trees. Uh, we've seen uh, more standalone businesses. We've seen a tremendous increase in value added products related to maple. So I think that has been a tremendous increase. Also, a lot of it starts right here where we are right now with the Proctor Research Center. They are the ones that are you know, test driving a lot of the technology and a lot of the, you know, what's coming out of the tree, the sap spouts, uh, you know, what kind of fuel to use. They're working on climate change, all those things. So it all starts here and it's being spread out across uh, uh, Vermont and the Northeast for what's happening here. Are there opportunities for additional markets? Again, we've seen substantial growth. Can Vermont do more? Can you sell more maple? We have plenty of Vermont maple, and I think that's one concern is we've got a lot of maple. We need to find new markets for it. So um, we are uh, embarking on, for example, we're going to be going to Texas. Uh, we've learned through some of the research that we have through some of the visitors that come to Vermont, uh, through the Department of Vermont uh, Tourism and Marketing. We know Dallas is the area. So we're going to go to Texas uh, this year, and we're going, to, we're going to tell them about Vermont maple. We've got barbecues, we've got sauces, we've got the spirits, we've got beer, all the stuff that's being infused to these new products. And we think it's a real opportunity to introduce bigger areas. We all know about Vermont maple here in the Northeast, but there are other regions of the country that need an introduction to it, and we think it's a good story to tell with what's going on in the world. Now, is that the agency's role when it comes to maple in Vermont? What is the agency's role as a vis-a-vis -vis maple? We have a couple roles. One, we do have a regulatory uh, aspect because we are checking to make sure that the quality is uh, superior. Uh, that is something that the uh, industries really want us to focus on, focus on, make sure the density is right, make sure the flavor is okay. So there's a regulatory aspect. We do have maple laws in Vermont. The other aspect is we do have a, a role to promote maple. Uh, it's a sig signature uh, Vermont product. Uh, people uh, really, really uh, love the story behind it. It's natural. It it's very simple. It comes out of these trees. You boil it down and, you, and, and it becomes maple syrup after a tremendous amount of work. So that's our role, uh, but we need to move maple, we need to tell that story, and that's what we're doing. And that story of real maple was evident earlier today with the governor's ceremonial tree tapping, the remarks that we, we heard from you. This is maple season. We're all aware of it. It's the beginning of spring, but in the fall, the agency actually hosts another event to help raise awareness of our forest and all of the maple industry. It's called Maple 100. What's that all about? Well, we, uh, we know about the season right now during the production time, but a lot of times when visitors come to Vermont, they want to learn more about maple. You know, the sugar, maker, sugar maple is becoming its foliage season, so we are, we are spreading the word. When visitors come to Vermont, maybe visit a sugar house, maybe make sure you look at the menu, maybe you'll haul some back with you, pair it with, uh, you know, with our cheeses, uh, with all our wonderful products that we have. So we just want to talk about maple more than just this wonderful season that we're in now. And we have to do that, you know, we have to do it 12 months of the year. So we really focused on the fall to begin with because of the sugar maple, sugar maple uh, turning color. That and all of us here, we can talk about maple any time of the no, year. It's, it's, it's awesome. A, it's just a wonderful, it's a wonderful product and it's so important to uh, Vermont and its future. And we can't thank our sugar makers across the state for the hard work that they're doing to uh, continue on this important industry of Vermont. We are number one. Uh, but without, to stay number one, you really got to stay at it. Well, I want to thank you uh, for being with us this afternoon. And I'm going to turn over here to my other shoulder as I introduce a man who gets to call the Proctor Maple Research Center his home. Uh, this is Mark Isselhart. He's a maple educator with UVM Extension. Uh, Mark, we saw at some of the beginning and some of the video. We visited with you over the years. What's an example of research that has, that's come out of Proctor that helps the maple industry? Well, primarily it has to do with uh, production, sustaining high yields, and understanding the technology that really can help producers maximize how much they produce in a sustainable way. And so looking at vacuum technology, looking at reducing costs through RO, all those things have really benefited the maple And, and a word that I've heard you use over the years a lot is yield, yeah. which is all of those things. There's just so much science. It's really an amazing thing. We hear and see reports about threats to our forest, whether it's the, the pear thrips, uh, 
uh, maybe more recently, the forest 10 caterpillars, that's a native species. Overall across the state, what's the health of our forests in general and our sugar bushes in particular? So there are certainly threats and sugar makers are aware and concerned about those, uh, those threats that pop up. The insects you mentioned certainly can be an issue. Drought is also an issue and how moisture in the forest uh, it fluctuates, it can be a real concern. We have dynamic weather events like wind or ice, those can be, those can be a threat. Sugar makers are adaptable and they rise to the challenge. So they, they will continue uh, despite those threats. I think sometimes people forget as an agricultural operation, the weather is such a factor. We thought maybe we'd be uh, rained out or have to change this today or these events that we're having more recently where there's 30 degree temperature changes in something less than a day. And I know that that's a big part of the sugaring, uh, uh, the maple industry. Yeah, the story of sugaring is often talked about in freezing and thawing. So you have freezing nights, replenishing the moisture in the tree, thawing to collect that sap. But the whole season only lasts four to six weeks or six to eight weeks, depending. Okay. If you miss a day because of bad weather, it, days probably aren't coming back at the end. So you really have to have everything ready. Your equipment has to be dialed in and repaired. And the sugaring season is quite short compared to other agricultural products. But you still have the benefit of the wonderfulness of this is your backyard. It's where you get to come and spend your work days. It's a wonderful place. I can't thank you enough for having us and great job all around today from the Proctor Maple Research Center uh, back in the studio in Burlington. I want to thank our director, John Walker, and here in the field, our field uh, producer and director and photographer, Shelley Holt Allen. For all of us here with Across the Fence, thanks very much for joining us, and we invite you to join us back here each weekday afternoon for another visit Across the Fence.